five. I don't care. Well, how, I, how big <laughs> how big a boy are you? Yeah, how big a boy are you? Uh, what was that guy's name from Oklahoma? Uh, hmm. I'm drawing a complete mind blank now. See, we are officially getting old because we can't remember who who was that comedian. How big a boy are you? Uh, Mercer. Roy D. Roy Mercer. D. Mercer. I see. That's just took right. me a second. Roy okay, D. Mercer. See, How big a boy are you? We're we're not over with yet. We can remember Roy D. Mercer. Yeah. So I figured we would swap back to kind of our old format where we jibber jabber for a minute or two, and then we'll go into the countdown. Not jibber jabber long, but just for a little bit, and then we'll move into the countdown. How about that? So is this another Jedi mind trick that we're playing on people? Like you know, I think you do that to me a little bit. You know, you we would it's have to. Like, you, it's kind of like you're my wife and putting these Jedi mind what? tricks on me. I've got a little too much hair and testosterone for that. <laughs> but you're a wily one. I will no, tell no, you. No, no, you're you're thinking back to Allison Jones and the Brad Jerkovich and the Jedi stuff. No, 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 no. I'm not. No Jedi mind tricks tonight. Okay. We're just discussing well, what to do with the Cypress Park if the tax initiative fails, and that's one of the things we're going to talk about tonight. Oh, but what what on earth will the police jury do if the library tax fails? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, well, they just built that brand new one, and doesn't the library have, like, lots of money in their budget or something? Or in their, I mean, in their deal, lots of reserves? I don't know. We've talked and about what it before. Will, what will King David do if they don't pass a renewal for public safety? Oh, my God. Are they gonna Are they going to lay off policemen and firemen? Is Could the safety of Bodger City going to be in, in question? Could be interesting. So we're going to, uh, I guess, give our opinions somewhat of that. Well, anyway, we're going to talk about the renewals for what that's worth. Hello, Christopher James Norris. Hello, Val Baker. Hello, everybody else that is might be out there listening or watching or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, so, so everybody, hey, here's what we're going to do right before we go to the break. Um, we're going to go over all of these taxes that you're being asked to renew. And, you know, we're going to talk about them and maybe you'll come to a conclusion as to whether or not you should support them or oppose them. A lot of people have been asking me, Rex, I don't know about you, but they've been asking me, hey, should I support this? Should I not support this? And, you know, I, well, I, I think we, we probably better talk about it because a lot of people hadn't been talking about it. Now, if you want to talk about it before the break, that's going to be a long chat. How about we go ahead and go to the countdown, and as soon as we come out, we're right into the millages. How about that? Because that can be a long discussion. Well, yeah, sounds good. Let's do that. <laughs> okay. All right, folks, we're about to hit the countdown, do our intro to help pay a few bills. Uh, Y'all know the deal, tag and share. And let folks know that we're online. Send a text message. We're on Twitter Live. We're on YouTube Live. And we're on, of course, Facebook Live. So I'm going to hit the new countdown button. We'll be right back. Tag and share, tag and share, tag and share. A lot of the back office on the politicians that they think walk on water, uh, they would be shocked. You know, there's an old wound from a knife in my back that just is giving me heck lately, and it's just really irritating, so I have to kind of wiggle around a little bit. Well, I, I've not heard my name in stable or Baton Rouge in stable in the same sentence in a long time. And I titled it A Shot Across the Bow of the Good Old Boys. Just, you know, they feel helpless, they don't feel heard, they have nowhere to turn. Some Republicans as well believe that government has the answers. And let me tell y'all something. I don't know anything government does well, nothing. And aren't there laws that say that you have public meetings so that the public can have accountability of their elected officials? They're making a little bit of progress, but I would definitely have to give uh, give the race to Caddo Parish right now. Yeah. I don't know, is there anybody from Plain Dealing watching, you think? As a member of the media, I'm very concerned about the what I've just heard. Did you or did you not requisition uh, money to fight against this or for you? We hire a, uh, a lobbyist and it cost us $15,000. We were opposed to HB 630. 
So for this week, folks, the cockroach of the week, according to Bozier Watch and Duke Lowry and Rex Moncrief, is... Raymond Cruz, legislative assistant, <laughs> Allie Feaster-Smith. Thank you, Allie. <laughs> well, I'm not thinking Star Wars at all. I'm thinking <laughs> zombie apocalypse. No way, okay, it was not okay. You know it wasn't David Montgomery. David ain't okay. gonna jump off in there with Chris. He okay. gonna do it. He'd soon spit on him as he would even look at him. Man, this is a Mickey D's Krispy Kreme wheat. Didn't you know? Who, who's paying y'all? And if you're driving on the roads, are you safe? Uh, it's on the road, yeah. Well, I know you're on the road, but I mean, is this all <laughs> folks coming from the border down there? Yeah. Going to it's going to Mexico, buses. Doesn't mean they interpret it the same way that I do. For instance, the Second Amendment. I take it very literally. That's been interpreted different ways in the court system all the way up to SCOTUS. Yeah, that's only going to cause more division that he claims he doesn't want to cause. And it's only going to cause more suspicion. We're still right now combined on both pages and YouTube at 264 people watching. That is amazing. Fo Coleman Project, a Walker Place deal, through conscious shocking actions. The purpose of their actions was to stop plaintiffs, being the Earl Coleman and, and Associated Groups not, from developing Walker Place. But here's a key thing, which in turn would enrich sitting city council members Scott Irwin and David Montgomery Jr. You hit the button. Does that mean that like people are like seeing us sitting here talking? And well, chatting? in theory, you know, it's an every week thing. We got to double check and make for sure it's like a miracle any of this actually works. This Bozier Watch live broadcast is brought to you by the Outdoor News, fishing and outdoors for our area. Acadiana Mortgage, over 25 years in the mortgage business. Pelican Training and Consulting. Reach out to Julie Ferris. Smarter Geek, making technology easier. And folks sharing information and watching out for Bozier. Now, grab your popcorn and a drink. Here we go. Share and share alike. That is the theme. I did. I had a group I didn't even know I was a member with. I had no idea. Yeah, well, you know. All right. Hey, I see I see some names that I uh, hadn't seen in a while. Mary Ellen Breen yeah, watching. Well, Thank sure. you for watching. Jessica well, sure. Maddox, been a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Who else have we got here? Of course, the, uh, the usuals. Christopher James Norris, Val Baker, all those sorts of folks that uh, we are so glad to have watching. Looks like we got fifty-ish some odd people. Hey, did you uh, did you notice my little screen graphic that I made for this? So hold on, I'm going to go ahead and flip us right over to screenshots. And I'm going to drag this guy and make him bigger. Did you notice that? You know, I did notice that, and and I have to say that I did not do my homework and I did not read up on HB four sixty one. So. I, like everybody watching the show, I'm dying to know what Mr. Bamberg is doing with HB 461, because I don't have a clue. Look, he is nothing short of trying to take sunshine away from all of us. He's trying to take sunshine. So yes. he's against solar. I got it. Okay. He's against solar and, you know, something about sunshine and disinfectant and all that sort of thing. Actually, it's a bill to somewhat limit access to public records and so we'll take a little look at that and kind of discuss it i got some news that uh, or got word that mr bamberg has told a very reliable source that he did not sell out in baton rouge so maybe he'll come on in the comments and and explain <laughs> Whoa. well i i am i am catching up here so uh, what what is he he I, I, I'm at a loss here. So, or, or is there? Does this? What does this bill do? Is this bill like eliminate public information requests? Is it eliminating sunshine? Is oh, it not really. But basically, um, let me let me go ahead and I'll move us over to some cuts. And I need to go to this cut over here. Let's see, hold on just a second, folks. 
Okay, so this is an article in the Louisiana Illuminator, um, which actually did a good job of summarizing the bill. And so you can see I've got some highlighted text here. And for those of you that are listening to the podcast version or watching on mobile, again, we know it's hard to read. That's okay. But this bill would allow a city mayor, parish president, or local government executive to declare any records confidential if they determine their public release would have a, quote, detrimental effect on an active business negotiation. It would also allow the company or uh, person negotiating with the government to request confidentiality. And it was brought by none other than Representative Stephen Jackson of Caddo Parish Commission fame. Interesting. So, <clears throat> okay. Yep. I'm against that one. I mean, uh, look, local governments and state governments already use uh the law to the extreme and delay responsiveness to public information requests and the public having the ability to know details. Um, they already, they already dragged that stuff out to the extremes already. In fact, they could have a ne deal negotiated before they legally w would even have to respond to the public information request. So I, I don't know why, you would need more legislation to limit, you know, as you said, sunshine more. I, I don't, I don't get it. I don't, I don't see the justification here. So let me give kind of a little bit of a counter argument, which is going to sound odd coming from me because I absolutely see no justification or reason really to support this bill. But I guess the argument could, could be made that, well, if it's a really competitive deal, and somebody's trying to have a competitive edge and give the government the best deal, then by shrouding some of these records in a veil of secrecy, um, that would help keep the competitive edge to particular companies in the bidding process. Now, truthfully, I fall just the opposite. I believe it should all be in the open, period. So everybody has the same advantage. And, and that's pretty I, much it. Yeah, I I agree. I mean, here here we are. We're arguing about transparency in government, you know. And I mean, it almost sounds like is is Mike Johnson? Is this Mike Johnson's bill? Oh no, we haven't even made it that far up the ladder oh. yet. Oh, okay, oh, okay. So but, Mike Johnson ain't got nothing to do with this. Not okay. not well, at least not so far. But now, to be fair. The details would only be made public when the local government declares that negotiations have ended or after two years, whichever comes first. All right, hold that thought for a second because I just got an email from a mutual friend between uh, Representative Stephen Jackson uh, and myself. Uh, saying that he mentioned to our mutual friend that he wouldn't be opposed to coming on the show to talk specifically about his economic development <laughs> legislation that dealt with public records. Uh, so he may come on tonight, or maybe we'll have him on next week to, you know, to discuss it. Whatever we can work I, out. So I would, if word he wants has gotten to, come on, to him, if he wants to come on, I would love to hear. I would love to hear how this promotes transparency and and good government i you know i agree i'm, I'm I, watching I guess my it's, email i guess it's possible that it could i would love to hear it I, I don't know and when you limit the public from having access or the ability to you know see behind the curtain and and what the negotiations are and what the details are i don't know how that you know helps i i, I don't get well, it all right, so, and again, I'm reading the article, so I haven't talked to Stephen Jackson about this yet. And again, if we can get him on tonight, maybe he'll come on. If not, we'll try to schedule him for next week. Um, Jackson told the committee he sponsored the bill because when he served on a local government board, consultants from out-of-state jurisdictions would file public records requests to find out what public incentives were being offered to a business. The consultants would then use the information co for competitive business purposes or to lure the project away. <clears throat> hmm. What say y'all, Bozier watchers? I, 
I'm going to have to hear his argument. What does Bamberg say? So back to Bamberg, that, that's what concerns me. He's a Bossier Parish legislator, so he's all on board with this? Well, okay, so let's just uh, let's take a look at this. Well, first of all, let me say this. I want to move up. I'm going to move my little pointer to this highlighted piece of text right here. This is important, and then we'll get to Bamberg and the roll call. Consideration of the bill came at the end of Thursday afternoon's floor proceedings, drawing no questions, discussion, or debate. I find that a little uh, a little unsettling. What say you, Mr. Lowry? No no debate. No, no debate. Nobody so it 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 passed out of there and nobody there was no debate, no questions, no nothing? No, nothing. And according to, uh, let's see, who is this guy? Uh, let's see, Scott Sternberg, who is uh, a First Amendment attorney and represents the Louisiana Press Association. According to Sternberg, he said Jackson's proposal would let local governments hide any records they want sip simply by claiming they are related to economic development. Oh, you know, that's kind of like... Um, Kind of like saying, well, the Verizon bill was 19 months old, and so we couldn't easily get to the records. And we all know that's a play on words, because literally all the morons had to do was call Verizon and get the records. But, you know, it, it just gives too much, to me, it gives too much wiggle room to our benevolent overlords in government. So let me get this straight. What you're telling me is, is that we have local elected officials that are seeking to allow the government to be less transparent for the sake of us. And then you've got, oh, by the way, Mike Johnson up there just basically pissing all over the Fourth Amendment to the Constitution. You know, the right of the government to be able to spy on all of you and dig into your personal everything without a warrant. I mean, just basically pissing all over your constitutional rights. Okay, I got it. It's more government and more government and then more government and less rights for you across the board. You basically have that correct. Now, we had a report of no sound, but I think that is probably on the end user's fault. So I'm... Yep, we have sound. I can hear us, and y'all can probably hear the echo. All right, so, yeah, you're absolutely right, Duke. It, it's like there's a veil of darkness surrounding all of our legislators all at one time. Let me uh, let me go ahead and pull up the roll call for this, because here is where uh, I was kind of picking on Mr. Bamberg, our friend Dennis. Because, if you notice, the yays for final passage of... HB 461 by Stephen Jackson, of all people, included Dennis Bamberg and, what's that Mellorin guy's name? Oh, yeah, Michael Mellorin. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> now. Um, wh- wh- where's Cruz? Well. Let's, let's, let's go to Cruz because I got to tell you, I trust in Cruz's vote. I think Cruz is probably the most conservative, limited government guy that we have. And uh, I trust in his judgment. There he is. Cruz voted yes, against it. He voted and against Danny it. McCormick. Of course, How? Danny McCormick and Dodie Horton all voted nay to that. That's our local legislators that I have highlighted there. Look, I was trying to I was trying to throw Cruz a little bit of a bone there, and I, you know, I'm not ranking you guys, but McCormick is solid, rock solid. Dodie's oh, yeah. she's in there, Keep and Cruz I, solid. I got to give Cruz credit. Cruz has been conservative. He's carried the line. Let me ask you this. Speaking of Cruz, have you listened to the LeCag podcast over his gold standard bill? I I have not listened to it. I probably should, but I I didn't have to listen to it because I was supportive of what uh, Rayman was doing in that. I I think he's right. He he makes valid a valid point, and I will link everybody in on Bozier Watch on the Facebook page to that podcast, and we'll encourage you to go listen to it as well because it's about forty five minutes long, very interesting. 
All right. Look, so I, I, I just want to say this. Let me say this per, personal privilege here. I may have had my differences with Raymond in the past or whatever, but I got to tell you, he has been a solid conservative. I, 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 I think he has. I, now, the only hiccup I might would say is some of the medical stuff uh, with with I don't know a little got a few questions there, but but overall he's been he's been rock solid conservative. Yeah, I I tend to agree with you. There's no doubt about it. I mean, we want to give credit where credit's due. Um, let's see. Christopher James Norris says this reeks of secrecy. Stephen Jackson friend was the owner. The old Shreveport Square building that caught fire, and he was trying to push tax dollars to his friend's project. Hmm, a few skeletons in that closet. Sounds like. All right, so that's that's the bill. If we can get Stephen Jackson on, maybe next week, because uh, I hadn't got an email reply response back yet. We'll see if we can get him on to discuss his bill, and let's get the other side. Point. Well, we may not agree, but at least we'll get the other side. So. Yeah, so it looks like government is trying to be less transparent. Imagine that. And uh, it seems like some Northwest Louisiana legislators are the ones leading the charge to enable government to hide more from you, the public. Um, yeah. Either you agree with that or you don't agree with that. And I don't agree with that at all in any way, I shape, form, or fashion. And not to agree with it as well. All right. So. Jeff Sadow Jeff Sadow said said Sternberg won the do over of the Caddo Sheriff's contest. Uh, I mean, I I guess I'm gonna have to research that because I am not hip with that. Don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Very interesting tidbit. We'll have to dig into that as well. All right. Um. So. Hey. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, I I, I was just wondering. You know, last show, um, we talked about the battle of the badges oh yeah well what about the uh what? remember that so, uh, yeah i remember that and i know basically what it is so is it a boxing match type deal between the firemen and the policemen yeah you know it's this kind of fundraising thing and 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 all that you know and we talked about how uh you know the the it was alleged that the mayor the fire chief and the police chief remember we showed the interview with the public information officer of Bozier, lewis johnson um talking about the renewal for Bozier city but you know uh that it was alleged that they weren't going to come to the battle of the badges which would have kind of been a first that the fire chief and the police chief and even the mayor didn't come um, it was reported to us that they weren't going to go because they were right. mad about the police putting up the sign that, you know, the city of Bossier is being cheap and not paying, you know, at least a living wage to the, <laughs> to the public. Well, there's that good progressive term, living wage. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying, I mean, when you call the police, do you want, you know, the Taco Bell salary police, or do you want the the superior grill salary? Yeah. I, you know, you want the saying. mall cop on the Segway, or you want the popo to show up in the uh, in the battle wagon? Yeah, well, me, I, I want, you know, top of the food chain. I mean, that's just the way it is. But, hey, so apparently at the Battle of the Badges, guess what? Guess who was there? I mean, you know, we we pointed it out at our on our last show that uh, the mayor and the police chief and the fire chief weren't going to be there. <laughs> well, and lo and behold, <laughs> that, now what's ironic about all that is they all showed up, and of course we didn't. <laughs> but anyway, that's a that's a whole other story. It wasn't real well publicized, though. Well, I don't know about any of that, but the thing is, is that the fire chief, the police chief, and the mayor, they need to be there to support public safety. And uh, they were mad last week. And they can say whatever they want to say. <laughs> they were full on mad and they weren't going to go. They were okay. pitching a fit. And we Tommy heard. Chandler Tommy Chandler can say what he wants to say. That's fine. He wasn't mm. going to go. But yeah. after I think we reported it first of the week, they did the right thing and they showed up and they supported 
you know, public safety. They supported the firemen. They supported the policemen. Yeah, I mean, you know, and and they can use us as a scapegoat. They can say, oh, no, those guys on both sides are crazy. We were going anyway, but we know the real truth. As a matter of fact, we know some other comments that were made off the record, so we won't share them uh, in the interest of being off the record. But we know some comments that were made that could be not so nice to certain elected officials. That that's right, and we're glad that y'all did the right thing. You were there to s- support public safety, and uh, you know, hey, hat tip to them. They sucked it up. They showed up, and they supported them. Now, I got to tell you, I there's more to come on all of this because Uh-oh. you know, drum roll, please. The pay is still substandard. Um, I don't know that there's any plan. And I, I can tell you, I, I damn sure don't think that they want to do anything about it, which brings us full circle to uh, the milit renewal in Bozier City. Because, yeah. you know, the people in Bozier City, y'all have a decision to make uh, as to whether or not you're going to renew the, the re, you know, milit renewal in Bozier regarding police and fire, you know, pay. Yeah, and I've got several screenshots to share on that. So let me get through playing around with these stupid little check marks here. Why is my software not cooperate? There we go. There we go. All right. So let me uh, give me a second here and let me go ahead and start. Let me check with the notes and see what I want to start with first. Uh, let's see. I guess cuts 10. We'll start with that page. So here's the deal. Uh, let me go ahead and switch screens, drag this over Yeah, here. so I'll, I'll fill a little bit of time here. I should have already started jabbering, That's but okay. yeah, so a lot of, a lot of folks, I mean, you've got a lot of millage renewals. We're fixing to jump off neck deep into all of them. We, a lot of people sent us messages wanting to know, okay, you know, what do I need to do on this? What do I need to do on that? And, you know, can y'all cover all of these millage renewals? Because there's quite a few of them on there. Right. Um, and there's not anything really of significance on there. Um, so we're going to go through them a little bit. And we're going to play devil's advocate, go both ways on this thing. We're going to discuss them and the pros and the cons and as best we can. And yeah, you, we're not tax and millage experts by any stretch of the means. No, absolutely not. Road scholars of Stupidville at best. But, you know, we have an opinion. And in regards to this one in Bozier City, um, you know, here here's the deal. I think I think it was originally, I think it was maybe nineteen ninety two that this was the original one to uh equipment you know pay manpower for Bozier city i I, re- I remember walking the streets for this the first time i i did it but i gotta tell you so the firemen currently and the policemen currently in Bozier city they're publicly saying that everybody in Bozier city should go out and they should support this renewal we heard lewis johnson talk about how important it was that the citizens go out and support this renewal because it's not an increase. It is to maintain what you currently have. Right? Well, sounds innocent enough. And to be clear, there are two city millages. So right now, are we referring to the 8.32 mil or the 2.71 or treating them kind of as one and the same? I'm treating them kind of one and the same, okay. but if you want to, I can't read that fine print, so I don't know the difference between the two. Well, let me, let me, let's just read them, uh, and especially for those that are listening to the audio only version or those that can't read the text because you're watching on mobile. And yes, we understand it's a little bit small, but that's the way it is. All right. Shall the city of Bossier, the South, shall the city of Bossier City, state of Louisiana, the city, continue to levy? and 8.3 mils tax on all property subject to taxation in the city for a period of 10 years, beginning with the year 2026, 
and extending and ending, excuse me, with the year 2035, an estimated $6.116 million reasonably expected at this time to be collected from the levy of this tax, of the tax for an entire year for the purpose of operating and maintaining the fire and the police, the fire and the police departments of the city. I can't seem to get my radio voice going tonight. Second one is everything's the same except it's a 2.71 mills tax with an estimated 1.99 million a year reasonably expected, again, for the purpose of operating and maintaining the fire and police departments of the city. So two separate millages that total, let's see, 10, 30, uh, 10 about 11 mils. Okay, so those are simply to maintain what the current staffing and pay are as it exists today. And we already know that it's not enough. We already know that it doesn't, you know, this doesn't meet, uh, <laughs> make ends meet for, for the police anyway. Um, so what I would contend is, is that why couldn't or why doesn't if the Boulder City you know, council and mayor, if they already knew that there was a problem with pay, why did they not change this? Why did they not come back to the public for something higher or more? Oh, wait a minute. Would that mean raising taxes? And, and why would they have to raise taxes? Why couldn't they meet pay some other way, Rex? Why couldn't they do it through some of the other monies that they have in the city? Well, you know, their argument is that, oh, well, this money is dedicated for this and that and this and that. But I'm pretty sure, you know, I'm no certainly no accountant, no CPA like David Montgomery is. But I'm pretty sure that they can move money around in the budget to increase that pay. I mean, of course, we beat it to death, pretty much, the... Uh, the Tower of Tax Dollars and the Monument, as well as other things. I mean, uh, Councilman Hammonds was on his soapbox about the increase of $400,000 total that was needed for this Dixie League maintenance building at the baseball park. And it's the principle of all that. It's the optics of it, number one. It just doesn't look good. If you're able, or the city is able to do all of this, but can't get our police and firemen's, our, our firemen pay, our first responder pay, up to at least, I'll say, regional standards. Like Lewis said, they're doing the salary study, but the salary study is not really necessary. So you're right, Duke. The question is, why haven't they already done this? Now, the question I have is, and I didn't dig far enough into this millage, into the either one of these millage renewals for the city, but are those millage renewals able to be used for salary and police pay, or is this only operations and maintenance? Well, I, I, I'm going to take a different tack totally here. So what I'm going to say is, is that the fire and the police, they can't publicly come out and oppose this. They can't do it. They have to publicly right. come out and say they support it. But I think that probably if it failed, let's, let's play devil's advocate here. If this failed, what would happen? Um, what would happen, Rex? Well, I mean, they would have to, the city councilman and the mayor would have to actually utilize the news media and sell the public on either coming up with a new millage and justify it and why they need it, or they would have to find the money somewhere else in the budget, right? That, that's right. They would be forced to have to do different math, come up with something else, another plan, and, oh, by the way, 
would there be another election between now and the time that this current one expired for them to get it on the ballot for the public to be able to vote on? Oh, I think the current, the correct answer to that question is yes, actually there is. So I would say that while the fire department and the police department publicly have to come out here and say, yeah, they should, you should support it. I'm of the opinion that if it didn't pass, it would actually force the hand of the king and all the rest of them to have to come back to the public with something that would, you know, make police and fire make ends meet and, and would be, you know, more reflective of what the Southern average in pay, not the bottom, but what the average is, I mean, for at least our public safety. These are the freaking people that call, when, when you get in a bind, you call for help. I mean, we should at least pay them the average, right? We're not saying pay them the top of the line. We're not saying pay them the lowest. Right. We're saying correct. pay them the average. How How hard is that? I mean, but the but the problem for our elected officials is is, oh, they have to give up something. Well, and what is it they got to give up? They got to give up monuments. They got to give up tennis courts, dugouts. I want my (laughs) private lake, and for the cost of that dugout, just the cost of that dugout, we could buy six or eight really nice rigged out bass boats and have them on our private lake, our private city-owned lake, let me rephrase that, our city-owned public lake where we give bass fishing (laughs) lessons to kids and elderly and, well, anybody that wants to attend. Well, I mean, what a deal. But we can't, we can't do all of that because those are not on the pet project list for David Montgomery and all the rest of his ilk. Yeah, so to in regards to this one, I mean, look, a vote against this is not a vote against the firemen or the policemen. It's actually, I, I'm just going to suggest that it's actually a vote in favor of police and fire. And if, you know, the council and the mayor, if they hate public safety so much, you know, here's what they'll come back. If you were to vote against it and it was to fail, you know, they would come crying to the public saying, we're fixing to have to lay off all these people, blah, 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 blah. But would they really be willing to gamble with that? Would they really be able to gamble with that threat? I, I don't I don't know that they can take the chance a second time. If you don't pass this the first time, the second time, they're not going to be able to gamble. <laughs> they're going to have to come back with a plan to address public safety and address it right this time. They can't wag the dog to all of you in the public. So well, that, that is a very good deal. So is our official, um, official deal for these going to be to vote no on them? Well, I don't know that Are we, we say no. I, I, I mean, look, I think I don't think uh, I can't vote on this. Um, you do. Right. You can, Rex. I right. can't. But what I am telling you is, is that police and firemen have been used as the wedge against the public for twenty to thirty years, maybe more. Twenty to thirty years in Bozier City. You have an opportunity as a citizen of Bozier to break that. You know use of public safety as the wedge against the public and uh, force, you know, your your elected officials in Bozier to either provide you, you know, public safety or not. You, you force them. They all want to run on it when they run so, for election. Tommy Chandler ran on it, that he's big public safety, big, big public safety. Well, let's prove right. it. Let's prove so, it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit this, which is going to show a big fat no to both of those. So this is not necessarily you, Duke, saying this. This is what I'm going to vote. I'm going to vote no. 
And I want to make it crystal clear because our good friend Jeffrey Sadall points out neither covers salaries. And if rejected, they could get another shot at renewing before the expiration of these and they would have to sell them. So even if you vote no, they still could get these renewed, but they would have to, like you were saying, Duke, they would have to sell these to us, the public, and explain why they need this while they can spend stupid money on monuments to themselves and dugouts that are not exactly open to the public. So I'm going to say I'm going to say our official position or my official position anyway is to vote no on both of these. Not no to police, not no to fire, no to the principle of it. Make the city councilman and the mayor have to get out there and do their job and sell the public on why they can waste money on all these pet projects but yet they need to maintain a an existing tax increase to get our police and firemen the stuff that they need. Let, let me let me say this. So to everybody, if you're going to go to if you're going to go to an auction and somebody's asking for the initial bid, do you always bid you know whatever it is the asking price for the initial bid is? Is that is that how you bid? Because that's that's what's happening here. You're bidding for this tax renewal and and you're just going to bid what they're asking? No, I don't think you should. I think you should force them to have to, you know, dig a little deeper. You want something more. We need something more sustainable. We need we need <laughs> this is not going the way it should. You've got the opportunity to make your voices heard that you expect more out of your elected officials in Bossier City. And, and it's not just Bossier City. We're going to go to the library board. Uh, we're going to go to the Cypress District because essentially the same choice is there for all of these entities. Why would you take the first request on each of these deals? You shouldn't. You should make them have to work for it. You should make them, you know, offer you uh, something a little better. I mean, it's your money. I mean, do you just, if you're just giving out hundreds on the street, I want to know where you're at because I'm coming and I'm going to have my hand out. Freaking give me some. <laughs> I'll take yeah. freebies. So again, I want to be crystal clear because we've had a couple of comments um, that I want to make sure that I'm clear. So there will be an opportunity to put these on the ballot again if they're voted down. I'm suggesting voting no on principle, not against the fire, not against the police at all, against the principle of the city council, the current Bossier City Council, specifically and the, for and, us, the, and, the, and mayor, the mayor, and the mayor especially, and the current mayor, especially, need to get out there and sell the public on why they need this money, but they can go out and blow money and waste our tax dollars on other crap. They need to get out there and do a little explaining. That's my official position. All right. Shall we move on to, um, you want to do the library or you want to do the Cypress district? Um, let's do the library because I've got an opinion on that. And, and you know what, David Crockett, look, Dave Crockett, I don't know where you've been, brother. You need to get back to the council meetings. You need to get back yeah, to falling down on your job. You, well, where, where, where are you me, at? You you on vacation? I let mean, me give where, him a little credit. He is the one that supplied me with the graphics that we're watching or looking at right now. So see, he's he's been on the job a little bit, okay. but he's been okay. a little absent. I, I heard more crickets than I have uh, Colonel Crockett at the city council well, meetings. I mean, look, everybody needs a break. David needed a little bit of a break. He was overachieving, but it's time to come out of retirement, David. Time for you to step back up. I would agree. All right, I'm going to try to make this a little bigger for the library board. So here's what we're looking at now. Let me go ahead and read this. Shall the parish of Bossier, state of Louisiana, the parish, continue to levy a special tax of 7.2%? 
0.43 mills on all properties subject to taxation within the parish, an estimated $9.5 million reasonably expected at this time to be collected from the levy of the tax for an entire year for a period of 10 years beginning with the year 2026 and ending with the year 2035 for the purpose of acquiring, constructing, improving, and equipping, maintaining and operating the public library facilities and system in the parish. So that answers the question that somebody asked uh, who uh, oversees the parish library system. Bruce, the answer is the police jury. So, okay, I'm going to plead my ignorance up front and whether this is the, the 7.43 mils, is that the same as it was before? I think it is, but I don't know for sure. I think that it is. And what I do know is that, you know, the library system was building up a huge nest egg. They, they had a pretty big pot of money built up. They weren't using all of it. And then the police jury came in, ran everybody off of the library board, and raided the money and they got the central library built i mean they just had a ribbon cutting this week celebrating Ma imagine that. the timing on that imagine the timing on that i mean look i even seen lisa johnson there i didn't she didn't have no bungee jumping oh, well, thing well, in her backpack but uh funny you should ask so let me get rid of these and let's take a look at some folks that were there at that ribbon cutting uh let's see oh well, who is that? Two peas in a pod. Bill Altimus and Butch Ford. Well, Caddo, Caddo Parish, Butch Ford. Yeah, uh, is this the Caddo Parish Library <laughs> opening, or is it the Bossier Parish? Yeah, and, and there's, uh, uh, not Red River Waterway Commission, but Port, Port Altimus. <laughs> I guess that's his title now. <laughs> yeah. All right, hold on. Oh, look. We even have your favorite person, uh, Juliana Parks. And I guess she is saying, no way, I don't want to be on Bozier Watch today, but oh well. So. And there's Philip sporting a big pair of scissors. I mean. Big old pair of scissors. And who are the, is that uh, the Blues Brothers sitting there? Is that uh, Chris Marsiglia and Keith Sutton as the Blues Brothers? Are they on a mission from God to save the penguin? I don't know, but they are standing on a sidewalk. I I don't know. Yeah, so let's. And, uh, and of let's... course, you got you got River in the background, but oh yeah. See, look at this. I'm telling you, they thought it was a screening for the Blues Brothers. Look at those guys right there in the shades. Philip Philip dresses up in a suit, pretty nice. Look at that. Anyway, so. All right, Bossier Parish Library, Miller's Renewal. So they, they built up this big, huge nest egg. The, the, um, okay. I just couldn't, you I just, couldn't resist. Okay, uh, so, you know, look, we, somebody tried to send this to us earlier today. To it, it was us. posted, it was posted on the Bossier City page. Oh, I know it was posted, but they sent it to us trying to bait us earlier today. And I almost bit, but I mean, look, this is the, the Bossier, the, the central library is the neighbors to first church. Right. I mean, pastor Brad would naturally be there. I mean, and why wouldn't he take a picture with the mayor? Hey, I, I wonder if the I wonder if the new library has books on wall there. Well, I'm just wondering if you can still go get those books that we highlighted for Juliana Parks when she was, you know, throwing rocks at us. I'm just wondering, have they corrected that, or is that still available? I don't know. All right, so uh, Jeff Sadhouse says seven point three is a rollback amount, so no increase over the current levy. Hey, that, uh, that reminds me that we're going to have a special guest uh, before too much longer who is going to give us a thorough explanation of how taxes work around this place. Well, I could use that, but, but uh, so no increase. But Jeff sat out, this is just to maintain the status quo. I don't think that the 7.43 was... I think that is way over what is needed to maintain the library system of Bossier Parish. 
because they were building up a huge nest egg to to build the central library and i i mean i'm i'm not speaking from uh, a point of knowledge but i'm kind of thinking that if you don't need 7.43 just to maintain the library system maybe you ought to decrease the taxes on the public and you know decrease it a little bit i mean you you accomplish what you wanted to accomplish um, in building the central library and getting it moved. Why do you need to continue to tax everybody at the current rate? Yeah, that's that's a good point. That's a good point. Is the library not self sustaining? Well, I don't I don't know that it's self sustaining. You know, it's it's like parks. I mean, parks don't make enough money. Like in Bossier City, I mean, they just taxpayers pay for it and they don't let citizens use it. I mean, okay. it, <laughs> anyway, okay. I, squirrel, I was going down a bad road. I'm going to stop, but I'm, but I'm just saying on the library, if you don't need 7.43 mils to sustain the existing library system, why do you need to continue to collect that? Um, I, I think it should decrease. Or maybe go off the books completely. But, maybe. Just saying. Maybe. I mean, what say y'all, Bozier Watchers? I, th I think the majority of the police jurors are conservative, identified conservative Republicans. Where are their conservative values? Oh, Lisa Friday Johnson. Yep. Is she bungee jumping? Where are we at? Let's see. She, Bozier Chamber alert. Um, she says for the library millage rates, 2004, 8.31 to uh, 2014. 7.57 the renewal is at 7.43 so i guess we are in the rollback period or whatever. but does it take 7.43 to maintain lisa or are, are we still trying to build more libraries yeah, i don't know uh, val baker says same old books hardly a new one but they got a nice shiny building to go along with val come on I'm sure they have cool multimedia stuff too. I don't know. I it's kind of a toss up, you know. Full disclosure: I haven't been to the library in a long, long time. Although I know you have, Mister Lowry, and we covered that several shows back. You had a interesting selection of books that you showed us all were still available at the library, despite the best efforts of those great people at the Bossier Parish Police Jury. And, and I and I. I, you know, I did have a great visit at the library. I need to do a follow-up and go back and see how accessible, you know, all of those uh, horrendous books and, and, and media that, you know, our police jurors advocated that the public shouldn't have access to, but yet there it was right there. Um, police jurors that advocated all that, I mean, it was right there. I mean, I, I need to go check and see if it's still available. I mean, if it's uh, still out there, what has changed? If anything, I bet, I bet nothing's changed. Uh, you're probably correct about that. So I don't really know how, um, how I really feel about this library tax. I guess I'm just going to put a, let me see. Well, here, here, here's the thing. If, and, and I'll say it the way I said about the city tax, if the public chose to not support this again, there would be enough time for the police jury to come back with a millage renewal. That would be one that sustained the library system, not building it more nest egg. Why, why does government need, why does your local government need to be building nest eggs? Why do they need more money than what they need to well, They to may sustain. have a disaster at the library, Duke. And they maybe they didn't pay all the insurance premiums that Montgomery's agency required. And so, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm just being a little facetious tonight. I, I, I'm just saying I'm... I think I'm going to, I think I'm going, you know, I think I'm going to vote against this one. Okay. I think that it gives the police jury the opportunity to come uh, back at us with another thing. Okay. Wait a minute. What did Lisa say? 
Right, Gee nice. whiz, fact. It's not just hard copy books. There are many digital opportunities with your library card. I saw Lisa just got her library card. She was holding it up. Yeah. And she was there today. Good for you, Lisa. Well, let's see. Movie and towels, we mentioned this spots, a few etc. as well as a new make new yeah. makers area uh, for you. Lisa says, gee whiz fact, it's not just hard copy. There are many digital opportunities, uh, audiobooks, movies, tablets, hotspots. Uh, as well, a new makers area for you entrepreneurs. Oh, they have 3D printers and all that. Now that might be fun. I mean, I'm not so sure. I, I could go buy my own 3D printer, I guess, and the taxpayers wouldn't have support if I really wanted to get into that. But I will say, um, Lisa brings up a good point because, you know, it's kind of like fax machines. We all thought by now the fax machine would go, be gone. Uh, and, and go away, but no, they still have fax machines. And, you know, we all thought that by now the library system would be kind of irrelevant because of the internet. But I think library attendance, correct me if I'm wrong, Lisa, if you know the numbers, I think library attendance has at least maintained, if not actually increased, as the rise of the internet increases. Okay. Point of correction here. I, I'm looking at the comments. Where did you say 3D printers? Oh, what, she did, but she said, let me put the comment back up. She said, a new makers area for you entrepreneurs. Makers, you know, people that make stuff with technology. 3D printers and stuff like that. I don't know. Maybe they don't have 3D printers. I'm just guessing. Oh, Jeff Sadow weighed in. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. And voting against sends a message to stop breaking the law by having too many jurors for too few library board seats and make darn sure your parish administrator is in the right parish. You got that right. Uh, so, oh, oh Jeff said, oh, I, that dude is just like golden. I mean, I, I'm, I'm getting the vibe that this election for everybody is about sending a message to your elected officials, you know, that, Hey, we're tired of your wag the dog crap. And you know, we're, we're ready for you to fly right. Yeah. And send to, a message. To treat us right. We can't use smoke <laughs> signals. So send a message at the ballot box. Now, Lisa does say, go see the reel. That will be a Facebook short video we made on the Bozier chamber page. So after Bozier watch, y'all head on over to the Bozier chamber page. Go check out the promo reel that they made for the library system. You, you know, Is the library I'm member a, of the Chamber of Commerce? In full disclosure, I'm not. Although I, would, I like Lisa Friday Johnson. You would think the, the you would think that they are. They did uh, the chamber did the ribbon cutting for the library. Well, yeah, but today. how would that work? How can a government entity or quasi government entity be a member of the chamber? How does that? I, I mean, I guess they just pay their fee. Do they get a special discounted rate? Well, I don't know. I, you know, it makes me wonder what exactly does the chamber support? Yeah. Is the city council a member of the chamber? And what about the police jury and the Cypress district? Do they all get government rights? I'm just curious. Does the chamber get free cabins and free boat launches? Free books. <laughs> free books? <laughs> now we're way off. We're, what, and I what swear about... <laughs> I'm only drinking sweet tea tonight, too. Do they get public safety for free, too? <laughs> right. we, we appreciate Lisa being in the comments and commenting and keeping us on the straight and narrow as far as libraries going. Look, she she is the bomb as long as we get to bungee jump off of the Jimmy Davis Bridge. Exactly. <laughs> that is exactly. it. <laughs> Just, anyway. Okay, All so right. what is the next millage renewal? More taxes oh. that y'all are all being asked to to pay. What, what's the next uh, one? Let me, let me, give me a second. Let me adjust the screen here and we will just talk about that. Mr. Wait a minute. Mr. Hold Mr. up. Lisa Johnson, our free public library system. Is that free as in beer? Free? Wait a minute. It's not free. You still, you still have it up there on the screen. 7.43 mils. That ain't freaking free. That ain't free. And look, okay, so. I'm having to pay taxes on it. Yeah, it ain't let me free. Get, let me get rid of this rectangle so we can see the comments. <laughs> she says, our free public library system has been supported 100% by a levy tax since 1948. <laughs> Lisa, there ain't no free lunch 
ever. I mean, you look at so your comment Lisa. right there. You're supposed to be president of the chamber. You're supposed How to are know you going to be business. mayor when you're saying... <laughs> <laughs> How are you going to be mayor or at large councilman against David Montgomery when you're saying it's a free public library when you're taxed for it? That's not free. I was going to vote for your mayoral campaign, Lisa, and go campaign for you. Well, probably not. <laughs> but I might have. But with oh, that comment, I'm not really. Wait sure. a minute. This is another one of those Jedi mind. Oh, tricks. wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Y'all are now being silly. Tax dollars do not pay for membership in the chamber. Okay. Well,. Uh, apparently tax dollars don't pay for the library system either. They're just charging us that millage just for the heck of it. Right? Well, just get our story straight. Just for kicks and giggles (laughs) of the uh, police jurors. (laughs) (laughs) Because everything else, all those, all those sorry books that Juliana was raving about are free. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to the Cypress district. We love you, Lisa. And we uh, do appreciate you in the comments and trying to keep us somewhat on the straight and narrow. Uh, hold on one more comment. Then we'll move on. (laughs) It is your taxes, uh, correct paying for the library system. I guess we could privatize it and charge a membership fee. You know, you could be like, it'd be like tennis. Yeah. Be just like the tennis courts almost, but not quite. All right. Let's move on to the Cypress District. <laughs> oh, and this is my favorite one. And I, before we even say anything, I'm voting no. I, no, yeah, I'm not I'll, voting I'll just, no. Hold on. I'm, I'm going to go I'm ahead not and voting, put... <laughs> I'm not voting no. I'm voting hell no. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and put the big X up there. Y'all can guess <laughs> what that's going to be. Um, <laughs> oh, but I so... thought you were on the fence on it. With the Cypress District, have you lost your mind there? There's the biggest X I can put on the screen. <laughs> All right, so let let me explain myself a little bit. Now, hold on, I got to make this thing smaller now. It's uh, oh, dead damn it. This mouse is jacking around with me. All right, so I'm gonna put a big X over here. But let's let's talk about this for a second. So. Because I want to clear a few things up, so we're gonna go a little bit down. Uh, memory lane here. So let me kind of get my notes up. Um, yeah, we last get, get talked. You, get your notes together. You get your you get your mind together because I'm gonna say this because the Jedi mind tricks are definitely being played against the public here on this one right here. Yeah. First I, people, of all, it ain't a federal park. Period. Full stop. Yeah. So so that whisper campaign. You know, in, in political campaigns, a lot of times, you know, regular folks. You know, a lot of y'all watching this show, you don't realize it, but you are being, I hate to say tricked, but, you know, political tactics are that whisper campaigns are started and to steer you to a conclusion. It's an indirect steering, but a seed is planted and the end result is for you to conclude in a predetermined outcome. And in this case, you know, if you don't support this, then the park is going to be turned over to a private developer for residential construction and no more park. Is that about right, Rex? Well, yeah, that's that's like you said, what the whisper campaign and the rumor mill is. And there's also the rumor mill that it's a um, that it's a federal park. And so they, you know, they can't do away with it. And I guess Biden's going to come in and take over. I don't know whatever that rumor mill is. So there are a lot of potential options here. Um, First of all, let me read the millage. Shall Cypress Black Bayou Recreation and Water Conservation District, we refer to it as a Cypress District, of Bossier Parish, continue to levy and collect a special ad valorem tax of 1.54 mills on all properties subject to taxation in the district. And I'll remind everybody that's a little over 80% of Bossier Parish is taxed. And it's not just houses, it's businesses too, ad valorem tax. All right, uh, an estimated 1.4 million, four and a half million reasonably expected at this time to be collected from the levy of the tax for an entire year. For a period of 10 years, beginning with the year 2025 and ending with the year 2034, for the purpose of improving 
operating, maintaining the public facilities of the district for the benefit of the public, including the construction, operation, and maintenance of a children's zoo. Okay, so first of all, a lot of landowners and property owners around Cypress and Black Bayou, and full disclosure, of course, Duke's one of them, they'll say, oh yeah, but you know, our, our, uh, our landowner fees and our blah, 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 help support that thing. Well, yes, they do, but they're actually a minor part of it. We've posted the financials many times before. I'm not going to go through all that tonight. Without this millage, the Cypress District is going to have to definitely revamp how they're doing things. Now, if you read the wording of this, the construction, operation, and maintenance of a children's zoo. Obviously, the children's zoo has already been constructed. So I'll guess that they have to put this renewal up with the exact same wording because the zoo's already there. And I think they're still, I think it's still in operation. I mean, they've still got peacocks and all that stuff out there. All right. But let me also say this. So this millage, it's not like they have a separate kitty of money for the gate and entrance fees and the landowner fees and those stupid, ugly ass boat sticker fees and all that. And a separate kitty for the uh, millage money and all that. It pr and I'm greatly simplifying it, but it pretty much is all into one kitty. So the millage not only pays for the stuff out at the park, it helps pay for the lawyer fees. Now, they have greatly reduced this year, so I'll give the new commissioners a little bit of credit in that. And since they've ousted Robert Barry, but it still helps pay for all of that stuff that is very top heavy. Now, the only reason I said that I've been kind of kicking this around is in full disclosure, the Cypress District did reach out to me to go help them with some tech stuff. I've done it free, no charge. I've pointed them in the right direction, helped them for a few hours, and given them some advice and offered my help if they need it further. All right? But I still, and I think that, um, I think that John out there and Miss Free and everybody are a definite improvement. I think Rodney Madden's an improvement. I think Kelly Long combined with Rodney Madden are an improvement on that board. But I really don't see the need for that park. I mean, I, I, I've had a lot of property owners out there and, and homeowners say, oh, well, yeah, but if they, they get rid of that park, then they'll just have a you know new development, a, a, a new subdivision and all that. Well, yeah, so? I mean, I, I don't get what everybody's reservation about having more homes around that area would actually be. Is it because you think it's okay for you to have a house out there, but not anybody else in the future? I mean, what's the justification for it? All right. All right. So is it is it my turn to weigh in here? Oh, yeah. I'm passing the soapbox over to you while I get screenshots ready. I'm okay. All right. Well, I'm going to start from the end of your comments and work my way back. So what I would tell you is, is I've heard, you know, from the perspective of people who live up here, that the park, you know, it, and its existence adds value to property values around the lakes up here, you know, and that mm -hmm. the absence of the park would somehow negatively affect property values up here and one of the things being that it's a a semi-private park meaning that you know it's a, a local entity not the state a state park or what have you that somehow or another that adds value to the 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 property values up here that's that's one argument i'm not saying that's mine i'm just saying that's something that i've heard fair, fair point um so me for me somebody who actually lives on the lake, I'm just going to tell you straight up, I'm against it. And here's why I'm against it. I'm against this renewal. I'm against it because while I agree with everything that you said, Madden, you know, maybe even the John guy, you know, he, he was out there during all the Robert Berry stuff. He was there. I, I don't, he may be trying to turn over a new leaf or change things or whatever. Maybe so, maybe not. He was there. 
while a lot of things were going on. So uh, the fact that or, or that he's a new face, that don't hold water for me. Um, Lisa Free, I, I like Lisa. I think Lisa, I, I think Lisa's a good person. I do. And Jeff actually raised his hand at us when we left the council meeting. The yeah, he didn't flip us off. <laughs> That's a good sign. He didn't flip us off or, or whatever. But what I would say is, is, that's still a part of the existing system. Good old, the gob network. I mean, l- 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 I'm not saying Lisa's a bad person. I'm not saying that at all, but I'm saying it is still a part of the same old system. The same guys who enabled the, the, you know, going out and taking out what, what about the million dollar facility out there, Rex? Well, how about what how about that? that? Have we ever got to the bottom of that? Well, actually, we haven't, and I've got video of that. I'll share that back out in Bozier Watch. It just got bumped to the top of the uh, Friends of Cypress Black Bayou page. Um, you're right, the million dollar park out there, and that was part when they were uh, uh, trying to jockeying to borrow the three million dollars through the bond initiative. One of the justifications for the $3 million was literally they were going to build a million-dollar event center. It's listed right there in the paperwork. I have it. We've provided copies well, publicly. That Well, that that's right. And, and But there ain't no million-dollar event center. <laughs> surprise, that, surprise. That's right. So this is one of those government bodies that are unaccountable to the public. And while we may have added good people, and I will say Lisa Free a part of the good old boy system. I'm just going to say it. John, who was a part of the system that was out there previously, and the 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 attorney who's now on the board, you know, uh, so I'm Long. indifferent. Uh, Kelly Long, I'm indifferent there. Madden, he's a fresh face. I, I think he has an interest in changing things, but he's, he's buddies with Philip Rogers, who Philip uh-huh. Rogers, you know, didn't, find any fault with the Cypress district until it came to his front door because he built a pier that crossed halfway across the lake out there. And now he's not so much in the hot seat. So again, I, I'm just going to call it like it is. I mean, look, Rex, you ain't got to say nothing, but I'm going to say it. I mean, Madden and Madden and, and him are buddies. You know, well, I, you're so, right. And then, yeah, they and then the and in other full disclosure, ins- Rodney is a client of mine, but also buy tires from Rodney. So it balances well, out. Well, I, I, I like Rodney, and I've done right. business with him. Yeah. And, but I'm just saying that you know, White and, and one of the other cats, they were all part of the old system. There's not been enough Weich and changes. Jerry Fowler. Jerry Fowler. There's not been enough changes substantively for anybody to con- support the continued you know lack of government oversight lack of accountability and you know uh ability for them to just go and spend money willy-nilly to to hire attorneys to go after people there's no accountability yet. nothing has changed no- right. nothing has changed in my opinion and they're asking us to continue to fund, um, you know, I pay free boat stickers, who, yeah. free boat stickers, free cabins, whatever for buddy, to buddy system. officials. No, I, I mean, I'm sorry. I've not seen any accountability. They asked for recommendations on changes. I, I said they needed it. I sent the email and I don't care. I'll show everybody on this show. I sent an email and said, you need to call for an investigation. Yeah. You th- you think they call for an investigation? No. Oh no, that no. might uh, might shine that sunshine light around there. So what I've got, what I've got, so I want to. I'm not going to run through everything here, but let's kind of just hit the highlights. So in 1958, Act 292 created the Cypress Black Bayou Water and Conservation District. It is a state-run uh, property or or. Uh, district run property let me rephrase that created by the state it is not federal property okay so y'all can get that out of your head there was some uh an agreement with the u.s soil service and u.s department of agriculture for the operation 
operations and maintenance of it and the u.s soil service funded i believe it was about 40 percent of the construction cost but it is a state and district run entity all right in 63 governor jimmy davis established the first board of commissioners in 66 Bossier Parish voters approved two mills to repay the bond that was used for the construction of the lake. And in 66, they also approved half a mill for operations and maintenance. In 67, the agreement was signed with the Soil Service Department of Agriculture for operations and maintenance. In 75, the dam was completed and closed for flooding. 95. So you see about the third highlight, yellow highlight down. In October 21st of 1995, 1.54 mills was approved by Bossier Parish taxpayers, 54% to 46% with 39 precincts voting. In 2003, fast forward, November 15th, 1.54 mills was again approved 68 to 32%. So they're gaining in popularity. But then something kind of interesting happens. Notice in 2014, the 1.54 mil renewal was approved with only 57 to 43% with 65 precincts. Hmm. So they started losing. And uh, in 2019, if you don't remember Duke, they literally tried to double the millage rate and that got defeated hot on the heels of the Bossier Parish School Board 40% increase, the Cypress District's attempt at doubling their millage rate was defeated 66 to 34%. So they got their hat handed to them on that. Now, that one was defeated, but the 1.54 mills was still in place. That initiative had it passed. The three mills would have replaced the 1.54 mills. And then you go on through 2020 on up to 2023 is a whole situation with Robert Berry and the dual office holding and the Department of Justice and the Bossier DA and that quagmire and blah, blah, blah. And eventually the Bossier Parish police jury did replace uh, Robert Berry or not renew his, um, commission and sent Rodney Madden over there to replace him, which of course, August the 1st of 2023, Robert Berry resigned as an executive director pursuant to revised statute 41-1121-A2. So you can't, nope. can't be an employee if you were a, a board member or whatever for two years, I think. <clears throat> yeah, so Jeff Sadow again points out, says, don't forget that when it was created in the late 50s. Its primary purpose was water management and sales, which can be done at a far smaller cost. Yeah. It, and, and he's absolutely correct, yeah. as usual. And to my knowledge, the only request for water for the purpose of agricultural uses, which was one of the purposes of the lake's construction and funding, was requested by the Atkins Sonier Plantation for farming to which the Cypress District denied that request for access to water. Yeah. So um, that was back in the 90s, early 2000s that the Cypress District did that. So the Cypress District has been astray for a long time. It's been um, out there in the wild with no accountability. And like the library, like Bossier City and public safety, you know, in my humble opinion, um, a vote against, and again, just like those, the, the ability for this body to come back to the public, you know, the time before the expiration of this millage, the time is such that they could revise, you know, their ask of the public with you know, something that that is more amicable to the public for accountability, because quite frankly, the these millage renewals are the first ask of you guys. This is the first ask. You you should ask for better management from your government, because right now you you're getting the bottom of the barrel. I, I think that they should have more accountability. And I am unconvinced that the Cypress Black Bayou Park wouldn't be better served to be a public park. 
I, I'm not convinced right now. I, I'm not. If if I had faith that it was managed locally better, I, you know, maybe, but I don't I don't have that confidence right now. I don't have it. All right. So to go back down memory lane for just a second, and I want to come right back to the park issue. Um, this is from the uh, Wildlife and Fisheries. They put out a management report for every lake in the state of Louisiana. And they actually have some pretty detailed information. But you'll see there that uh, the Cypress Bayou Reservoir is owned operated, owned, operated, and maintained by the Cypress District as a multi-purpose reservoir. The uh, Lake Commission is responsible for the control structures on the lake, including operation for drawdowns. Now, that's interesting because, as you remember, we reported here and showed at one of the meetings after questioning that the operations and maintenance account is not up to snuff as far as the dollar amounts that really should be in there. So that dam is, I don't know, nearly 50 years old, 40 years old, whatever it is. Um, with minimal maintenance on it so you know there's that uh but drawdown plans from the commission are coordinated through the louisiana department of wildlife and fisheries and the louisiana department of transportation and development prior to opening the control structure dotd performs annual dam safety inspections the district owns, operates, and maintains Cypress Bayou Reservoir and the adjacent Black Bayou Reservoir. As we talked about, is Act 292 of the 58 legislature that created it. Um, funds for the construction, you can see down here, as I said, by the U.S. Soil Conservation Service in 1967. This is interesting. The two reservoirs were created as, as multi-purpose reservoirs for the storage of water for irrigation, municipal purposes, recreation, and sediment storage. The dam and control structures were designed by the Louisiana Department of Public Works. It doesn't say that they were designed for people to build nice homes around. And nothing against y'all folks that live out there. I'm not saying that. But I want you to understand that the primary purpose of the reservoirs is water for irrigation and municipal purposes, which, as you pointed out, Duke, they haven't done. They've sold some water to a couple of fracking companies recently. Yeah, that that that's right. So, you know, I think, I mean, again, they have not made adequate amendments to policy and they've had plenty of recommendations they know what needs to happen but they're sending it to you guys they're sending it to the public and to roll the dice maybe you'll continue maybe you'll rubber stamp it and you may you you may actually just go in there and check yes on all of this um but they're rolling the dice to see if you'll go for the ruse again and but if you don't then guess what? They're going to come back and then they'll have to give you the accountability that for your money and your tax dollars that, you know, you should rightfully be getting um, because you're not getting it now. You're yeah, not. You're not pouring money and, into it, not getting anything back out of it, except paying some high powered lawyers from Caddo who love to shout people down in the middle of public meetings, by the way. And we have video of all that that we've shown ad nauseum. Uh, hey, I want to point out one more thing. Let me let me switch back over to screenshots. Maybe somebody in the uh, I've seen these around. Have you seen these little signs, Duke? I have seen them. They are, they are like all up in the uh, easement there, and I can only imagine that it's the police jury doing it. I mean, so I guess uh, breaking the law is well. We already know that the police jury can break the law I, at will. They don't care. I hate to defend the police jury about anything. Maybe in their defense, maybe it's a private individual who's sticking the signs up. I don't know. But does anybody know where these signs originated? Maybe we need to send some public information requests out to the police jury and the library system and the library board and all that. See if they pay yeah. for any signs. Maybe it's the supporters of all of that, those foul books that allegedly the police juries doesn't support if you if you could only see if you could only see what was taking place 
you would agree that we had to take over. How any Republican could oppose? Oh, all right. Uh, oh, before we uh, get to our ending stuff, I do want to put up there. Hold on just a second. I'm going to shrink that down a little bit. So Thursday evening, we're going to do an outdoor news show. I'll share it over on Bozier Watch and Louisiana Watch too. But we are going to have the new, uh, newly appointed Secretary of the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries as our guest on the outdoor news, Madison Sheehan. So wait a minute, Thursday night, that's usually when we do the Louisiana Watch thing, so we're switching up a little bit. We're going to switch up just a little bit because, I mean, it's the wildlife fisheries that kind of belongs under the outdoor news banner more so than Louisiana Watch. I don't know, it's kind of a toss-up. Yeah, so what's the story behind this? So, uh, you know, this is uh, Madison Sheehan. Sheehan, I can't, I don't even know if I can pronounce her name. I might have to get her to correct me on pronouncing her name correctly, but... uh, she was formerly um, Christy Nome. Uh, she was associated with Christy Nome in South Dakota. And I think she was the Republican Party, maybe even the chairman up there. And, you know, a lot of people say, ah, Jeff Landry appointing her to the Secretary of Wildlife and Fisheries, that's just a political thing or something to that effect. Right? Well, I look... Not that, I, not that I'm completely against the wildlife and fisheries because I know a lot of the enforcement guys and the biologists, you know, especially the ones up here in our region and all that. So I'm not anti-wildlife and fisheries, but I'll just say this. There are, you know, I, I'm not going to get on my soapbox tonight about it, but I always compare us to Texas and the bass fishing industry that Texas has created. It is a multi multi million dollar industry and Louisiana's kind of lackadaisical about it over here and all that and I lay that blame at the feet of the wildlife and fisheries so I don't know maybe it's one of those things where um maybe we do need a fresh set of eyes in the wildlife and fisheries I don't know well I mean I hate to 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 break Oh, I'm not going to. I'm not going to go there. I, I've got another idea about this appointment. People can say political appointment all they want, but I, I got. I'm just going to say this. I don't think that holds water, and I don't think that holds water at all. And Thursday night, I don't think I'm going to have to defend it. I think Madison is going to. I, I think she's going to blow the lid off of this thing. I I look forward to the conversation. Good friend Ricky Bridges says, get rid of the cattle slot. Ricky, I'll say this. And look, uh, Jeff Sibley and I talked about it when I interviewed him a couple of years ago on the Outdoor News. If it was up to Louisiana, they would get rid of the slot on cattle because it does zero good. It's Texas. And so if Louisiana gets rid of it, that breaks the cooperative agreement, blah, 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 and causes mass confusion. And so we're stuck with the dadgum slot. Anyway, Ooh, that's Paul, a whole other Paul Johnson, someone better start watching that Caddo Bozier port business. This biofuel carbon capture plan at the port needs some serious scrutiny. Taxpayers on the hook for big bucks. Oh, Paul, you mean like the solar crap going all over Caddo Parish, sponsored by the port? Uh, yeah, I agree with you, brother. I mean, seems but, like uh, we talked about that a little bit. I mean, you. You all are going to get to vote for more taxes to pay for the port. I mean, you, <laughs> I mean, it's y'all are the ones that got to vote. You, you're the ones that's got to dig into this stuff a little bit. Duke and I know which way we'll vote on stuff, but we're only two votes, and it takes a lot more than that to sway an election. Uh, yeah, all we can do is just put it out there, whether or not y'all share it and whether or not you take action on it. But, hey, Rex, cut one. I just got to say, uh, have you seen the new portrait of Walk on Water's family photo? Oh, it is, I'm, all, I'm almost scared to drag this into here, it, but here we go. Oh, wow, he, that's cute. He, he took a new portrait of his family. Right. That's, let's see. Oh, uh, he is married to the FBI and the DOJ and has the CIA, the uh, Department of State, the State Department, the NSA. Look at that big old NSA standing up there, proud, and the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. 
Now, you know, I mean, some people are kind of like, oh my gosh, that Rex and Duke are just horrible. They're horrible. How oh, could we're consistently they do? horrible. We've been on Mike Johnson's ass since we started the show. He is literally one of the reasons we started. One of the reasons we started the show. That is absolutely right. And when we caught it in the beginning, he is proving it true every single day. The longer you resist that Mike is out for Mike and not out for all of us, I, I mean, you're just de- you're just denying truth even longer. Yeah, we've so, been saying it since day one, and we have cut him. We have cut him not much slack in the entire I don't know three or four years we've been doing this thing. Yeah. So the the next um, thing. Um, oh yeah, we'll, that will be cut too. The transition. We you can go there, but you don't have to. Um, I mean, maybe I should preview this first. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was trying to go to go to my next link, but it ain't coming up right. Uh, that's where I wanted to go. Uh, is it in the notes? That Google search? Yeah, it is in the notes, but it's not coming up right. The Google search or the one, uh, the one below that? It was the Google search. Right. Um, Let me see if I can get it to play nicely. So... Uh, I'm just wondering if, if if y'all have been following. Yeah, I don't know why it's not yeah. coming up right. Okay. If y'all been following what's going on in D.C. and what our illustrious Speaker of the House, Congressman from the Fourth District, our Congressman here in Bossier Parish, has been doing, he literally was the tie-breaking vote uh, to enable, uh, you know, FISA to continue on. He voted. And I hate to say the Democrats, he voted with the Democrats because it really isn't about Republican and Democrats. Right. This the Republicans is, pretty much started all this. Yeah. Go go to the, the link Constitutional Congress. So okay. I just want to let's have a quick history lesson for all of you, because I, I find too often that people. I, they don't study the Constitution. You don't even know your constitutional rights. A lot of people don't. They don't know it. And, you know, last, uh, I think it was Thursday, we had Chris Alexander, and we were talking about how his parents, him, you know, of him and Royal and, the, and their, all their family, you know, their their dad and mom, they, they uh, a great family, but they impressed upon them the importance of the Constitution. They studied it. Royal Alexander, I can remember in the in the maybe it was the late nineties, early two thousands, Royal was doing these little constitutional classes, and he would do them at these restaurants, and people would show up, and that he would talk about, you know, he wouldn't, nobody paid him money, but he was talking about the Constitution and talking about your rights, trying to educate people, and you know, it's so important, and when y'all hear people criticize you know, being critical of Mike Johnson, y'all need to understand, and especially in regards to FISA, why people are being critical. You know, what did Mike Johnson advocate for as he's went through our political circle within our parish? What did he say? He said, I'm a constitutional attorney. Oh, yeah. If I've I'm heard a const- that once, I've heard it four million times. I'm a, yeah, I'm a constitutional conservative. And, you know, all the different things. Well, Rex, read read that Fourth Amendment right there. Read the Fourth Amendment to the Constitution, y'all. Y'all tell me, you know, when you hear this, what do you think? I want you, I want, read it, Rex. So the Fourth Amendment says, the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated and no warrants, no warrants shall issue, but upon probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. That would be the Fourth Amendment to the Constitution of the United States. Now, do y'all do y'all realize what FISA, what the FISA? thing that Mike was the tiebreaker for does 
it enables it enables the FBI and all of them to basically, without a warrant, spy on you to go in. If they wanted to, they can go into your email. They can go into your social media. And, and I, I know how you feel, Rex. If it's on the Internet, it's open to everybody in the world anyway. But he's basically legalizing the government to uh, violate your Fourth Amendment rights. Mike Johnson, the constitutional you know, lawyer, whatever, the guy that said he believes in the Constitution for all of us, you know, he he went with this. He said, you know what? Screw the Fourth Amendment. Oh, but it, he got it, he got in that skiff, and it it's the magical skiff. When you go into the skiff, before you go into it, you're a Mr. Constitution, and I'm a constitutional attorney. I'm a constitutional scholar, and I know the Constitution, and I can take pictures with Trump because I know the Constitution. But when you go into that magic skiff and come out the other side, whoops, well, I see now why. Yeah, uh, that whole Fourth Amendment thing, uh, we need to have a but now, clause in there. The Fourth Amendment, but. Now, I know... I know I have heard these words off of Mike Johnson, a.k.a. Walk on Water's lips. I've heard this. I've heard him say, and I can't find it. I'm going to find it. I know, I know it is somewhere and it's recorded, but I just hadn't been able to put my fingers on it. When I find it, I'm going to play it for you guys. But I've heard him say this. He's quoted Benjamin Franklin. Do you know which quote I'm going to? I'm going to quote Rex. Oh, let's hear it. He, he, he has quoted and he said, and quoted Benjamin Franklin, and he's used this in his political speeches and his stumps. He's used this before. He said, Benjamin Franklin, quote, those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety, end quote. Right. He's used that. He's used that on all of you watching this show, but yet he just voted against and voted with the Democrats to to basically set the Constitution on fire, to burn it up. So, so all of you Mike Johnson walk on water sycophants are do y'all all subscribe to to abolishing the Constitution? Are y'all all in favor of that? I mean, I'm just asking. I, I want because I got off that train. Look, I was there. Rex, you were there. We all supported Mike Johnson until we learned the truth, and then once we learned, we got off of it. But a lot of y'all, you're all still on it, and I'm just wondering: was Benjamin Franklin right or wrong? And you need to ask that question of yourself. Those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. Do y'all agree with that or do you agree with Mike Johnson? Look, it goes just, even it goes even deeper than that to me, Duke, because take what you just said and add in the fact that he can use the excuse, well, I'm having to do something to compromise, but that is exactly the problem. You're literally compromising, Mike. You're supposed to be a man of principles, a man of constitutional principles, by the way, which you've all told us ad nauseum. And yet, <laughs> yet, you want to compromise those very same principles, those very same constitutional principles, to get along and go along. Again, when you walk into the magical skiff, it transforms you into literally every other politician out there. You're no different than them. Not one little bit. No different. No different. Just polished haircut, polished speech. I mean, that's all it is. I mean, look, apparently people are finding offense to us Making They're them dropping listen to the like truth. flies. They're dropping like <laughs> flies. They they can't listen to it. They can't tolerate it. <laughs> okay, I got to keep talking because my goal is to put us down to zero. <laughs> yeah, I won't even have to hit the finish button. It's just going to automatically shut down at zero. <laughs> Y'all don't want to hear the truth. So Y'all don't want to hear the truth. 
So Christopher James Norris says, does, does really any politician have principles and don't flip-flop? Very so, few. Very few. But, there, are, there are a couple, and I literally mean a couple as in probably two. <laughs> um, but you do have a point, but it doesn't matter. Just because the rest of them flip-flop, just because the rest of them lose their moral value, lose their principles, doesn't mean our guy has to. So, so to all of y'all bailing, those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. Benjamin Franklin. So all of y'all are going to throw in with Mike Johnson and you're going to throw Benjamin Franklin out the window because that's what you're doing. That's what you're all doing. And y'all can be mad at us. You can be mad at us for saying it, but it's the God's honest truth. Yeah. <laughs> and Look, at least we have consistently been saying that for 200 plus shows. There's not, not very many shows go by that we don't mention walk on water or Mike Johnson somehow. So we've been yeah. consistent. The entire time. Yeah. All right, Mr. Lowry. Well, one more thing. Uh oh. So, in the Supreme Court today, and I got a link in the comments, there was an amazing thing happened. An amazing thing. So, everybody, I don't, what do y'all think about January 6th? And all the people on January 6th that have been, you know, many of them have been put in prison for up to 20 years. Justice, the FBI, all the government, you know, putting all their weight against them. Oh, that Mike Johnson supports, by the way, um, you know, and funded. You know, they've been they've been going after all the January Sixers twenty years. Well, well, Justice Gorsuch had an interview, you know, or, or during the hearing today, or it wasn't an interview. I mean, he was asking questions while they were litigating. Uh, a case regarding January 6th, he asks some amazing questions. And, and all I can say is, is that a lot of people are not going to see this, but I think y'all should listen to it and you need to consider this, what, what Gorsuch says. This would be a good way to actually start wrapping up the show. All right, so let's take a listen. Let's see, let me make sure I've got volume up. And here we go. So, so what, what does that mean for the breadth of this statute? Um, would a sit-in that disrupts a trial or access to a federal courthouse qualify? Would a heckler in today's audience qualify or at the State of the Union address? Would pulling a fire alarm uh, um, before a vote qualify for 20 years in federal prison? There are multiple elements of the statute that I think might not be satisfied by those hypotheticals, and it relates to the point I was going to make to the Chief Justice about the breadth of this statute. Uh, the, the kind of built-in limitations are the things that I think would potentially suggest that many of those things wouldn't be something the government could charge or prove as 1512c2 beyond a reasonable doubt, would include the fact that the actus reus does require obstruction, which we understand to be a meaningful interference. So that means that if you have some minor disruption or delay or some minimal Outburst. Okay, we don't so, think it falls so within the my, my outbursts require uh, uh, the court to, 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 to reconvene after, after um, the, the proceeding has been brought back into line, or uh, the, the pulling of the fire alarm, the vote has to be rescheduled, or uh, the, the protest outside of a courthouse makes it inaccessible for a period of time. Are those all federal felonies subject to 20 years in prison? So with some of them, it would be necessary to show nexus. So with respect to the protest outside assume, the courthouse, we'd I can, have to show, think, yes, they I were aiming I've at shown, the proceeding. I, yeah, they were trying to stop the proceeding. Yes, and then we'd also have to be able to prove that they acted corruptly, and this sets a stringent mens rea. It's not even just the mere intent to obstruct. We have to show that also, but we have to show that they had corrupt intent in acting in that way. We and went around that tree yesterday. I, I know. I, I, uh, I heard you get, the You get the hypocrisy, right? I guess what You're I would say is to the extent that your hypotheticals are pressing on the idea of a peaceful protest, even one that's quite disruptive, okay. it's not clear to me that the government would be would able to show it. that each uh, of those most protesters... Okay. Well, as simple as that was, and, and, and as obscure as that whole dialogue right there was, 
it cut to the chase. Yeah. Gors- Gorsuch was basically saying that, you know, if, if in water, and he gave multiple, he gave four examples of the, you know, what January Sixers were accused of was disrupting a proceeding, and most of them were sentenced to 20 years in prison. That was the sentence. And if if the crime was disrupting a proceeding of Congress, and he gave, then gave four examples where none of the four examples that disrupted proceedings were given pretty much anything they were given zero nada how can you justify giving 20 years to the disruption of proceedings on january 6 when you've got all these other cases of disrupting the proceedings and nothing not look look, zero i'll say this again first of all you need to go watch the tucker carlson interview with the QAnon sham uh, shaman guy because it is absolutely eye-opening but you know gina and i watched january 6 on the news while it was happening and yeah there were some people that destroyed some property they broke windows they did all sorts of things okay charge them with destruction of government property But when you literally have the Capitol Police leading Jacob Hansley into the chambers, not they were getting out of his way because they were worried that, you know, he had a weapon or something. They were literally leading the people through there. You've all seen the video. They were being instructed by Jacob Hansley and others to, let's be careful and don't disrupt this too much. And the cops were leading him in there. Why aren't the cops being charged? The cops were not in fear for their lives at that point. So why are the cops not being charged the same thing? And and I I get what Gorsuch is driving at. It's it's essentially the same thing that I'm driving at right now. Or let's, you know, call a spade a spade and fair is fair. If you're going to charge those people with this, you know, from January 6th, and again, I'm discounting the ones that literally destroy government property. They should be in charge appropriately for that. All right. But if you're going to charge the rest of them that were mostly peaceful in all this, uh, what the hell? I, look, Paul Johnson, he summed it up. He says, the rule of law is dead in America. The whole system is rotten to the core. And he's absolutely correct. I mean, the only the only people that committed a crime were the Capitol Police that murdered Ashley Babbitt in the Capitol. I mean, you know, if you, as Gorsuch is pointing out, if you're going to allow people to pull fire alarms to disrupt proceedings, if you're going to allow hecklers to disrupt proceedings and not prosecute them, I mean, how on earth can you justify right. uh, prosecuting January 6th, people. Yeah, so you can't. So, so Christopher James Norris, and we don't always agree, but we do appreciate him as a longtime listener. He says, may I say something without being judged? If Trump would have just accepted the loss in 2020, like every single president has since the beginning of the country. Oh, you mean, what was that guy's name? Oh, the Gore v. Bush thing. Anyway, um, since the beginning of the country, things could have been different. Look uh, how Jimmy Carter hated being a one-term president, but he accepted the results. That's because Jimmy Carter lost in a landslide, Christopher James Norris. If you're going to use examples, you got to do a little better than that. Now, I'll agree that I think Trump probably should have done better, but I will say this. If you listen to Trump's speech on the afternoon of January the 6th, he did not encourage people to go riot. He did not. So Pe- that argument just goes right out the window. Peacefully march to the Capitol. He said, peacefully march to the Capitol. That's what he said. I mean, it's on video. It's what he said, regardless of what the media says. The media, of course, you know, portrays everything as something else. That's not what the man said. The man said, peacefully march to the Capitol. And Go listen to his own words on video on all of the news media. 
Um, Paul Johnson said like Hillary did when she lost. I honestly think Paul Johnson, I honestly think Hillary was in such, such shell shock uh, and couldn't figure out what happened to the system. <laughs> she didn't know what to do. When she <laughs> and, 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 and look, uh, look, I love you, Chris Norris, but I totally disagree with you. Trump didn't lose a 2020 election. The 2020 election was stole, and it was not stole by Democrats. It was stole, stolen by the Democrats and Republicans. It was stolen by the swamp because the bottom line is, is that there is this government that's not Republican nor Democrat. It is as what was that? What was that movie? The haves and the have nots. You're either in or you're out. And the majority of all of us watching this show, there's some of you that are lurking in the shadows watching this show. Y'all are in and you know you're in. But well, the majority Johnson, of all of us, we're out. You're not, Paul Johnson, you're not. He reminds us they refused to deploy the National Guard like Trump requested. And again, I refer back to Tucker Carlson had an interview with the Capitol, uh, uh, not Capitol Police guy, but uh, I forget what agency it was from. Anyway, had an exclusive interview with him. You need to go listen to that too because it's a real eye open. Um, Al Gore accepted the Supreme Court decision to pick Bush over him. Yeah, finally. After how many days was that? But anyway, we appreciate the commentary, Christopher James Norris. And I do concede your point that if Trump would have just accepted the defeat, whether it was justified or not, uh, later on. But if you go listen to Trump's own words that day on broadcast on all the news media that was covering the event, go. I challenge you, go listen to his own words. He did not incite a riot, and the vast majority of those people were not out there rioting. They weren't throwing Molotov cocktails trying to burn the Capitol down, unlike some of the protesters had done in the past. Who who haven't been charged and who hadn't. Ever. There is yeah, there is a double standard in justice. I mean, bottom line, I mean, our government is broke. Mike Johnson, who was supposed to be the best of us. And he threw in with them all. I mean, yeah. I, I got to tell you, I got no hope for our government being reformed. I don't. Wow. Um, we got to come gonna... up. Let's see. Well, I guess we can call him Walk on Water. Wow, because we he has to have a three letter acronym now to go along with the agencies that he that he just shook hands with, being the FBI, the NSA, and all that. We can't just call him MJ, and we can't just call him Walk on Water anymore. He's got to have an acronym. Wow. Well, I don't know. We'll figure it out. But uh, either way, I mean, uh, look, you guys. We, we beat this dead horse as long as we can. <laughs> we have. We have. I, I mean, it's just, I guess I'm more sad than anything. I, I wish, you know, we got to trust him. We got to trust him. I'm, I'm tired of politicians saying we got to trust him. He's, he Mike's not the only one. Yeah, like, he's certainly not. John Kennedy, John Kennedy. I, I remember him coming to Bozier, that big powwow over at the Civic Center. And he said, and he, and he said something to the effect of, if y'all saw what I saw, you know, we can allow. No, don't tell me if I saw what you saw, knowing I can't see it. Bull crap. I don't <laughs> trust you. You're a politician. I don't trust any politicians and I don't trust government anymore. I mean, it's the way it is. You're right. You I mean, local right. government, local, how many of y'all believe local government tells you the truth? They don't yeah. tell you. And, and our state government, you, at the start of this show, they're trying to limit, uh, sunshine. They're trying to reverse the sunshine laws in the state. Yeah. Of they're, Literally. they're trying to prevent you from seeing even more. Yeah. How the hell are we supposed to trust any government? Right. I mean, <laughs> I, I got to. I don't know, well, man. I'm going to tell you, I'm voting no on everything because if you cut off the purse strings, I mean, that forces them to either have to come forcibly take it, you know, and then we'll, then you'll all know. Or, then you'll all know. Or they have to be able to convince enough voters why it's necessary. But one or the other. One or the other. One all right. Let's end the show on this note. Christopher James Norris says, the government has gotten out of hand and not what the founding fathers were intended uh, for the new government. So on that, we wholeheartedly agree.
it is out of control, Christopher James Moore. Speaking out of control, Duke, we're out of control too. I'm out of control and I am out of here. Good night. Thank you all for watching. And uh, I'm glad we were able to beat the number down into the uh, uh, 30s. We were able to, yeah. What kind of show hosts are we? We're trying to run people off. (laughs) They just don't want to hear the truth. (laughs) Right. Good night, folks. I'm hitting the finish button now.